Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Tim Hart, branch manager of Van Dyke Mortgage right here in Fort Myers, Florida. Got a, um, I don't know how I scored him, man. He always shows up when I ask him. Uh, we're doing a series about the inside of the mortgage loan process. Today, uh, I got joined by the one and only, the president of Van Dyke Mortgage, Tom Van Dyke. Tom, how you doing? Good, Tim. How are you today? Good, man. Thank you very much for being with me. It's awesome to have uh, the president of your company be willing to help out and jump into the conversation like this. So thank you very much. Well, this is my favorite part of the business, doing the promotional stuff and letting people know what we're doing and things like that. So uh, I, I get a kick out of it. Yeah, I'm with you. Like That's definitely my favorite part as well. So we should have a good time here. Um, hey, Tom, before we get into um, everything with you know what I want to talk about, which I want to get into the um, you know Van Dyke Mortgage, the the path that you had as the president and, and what you've learned, and I think it's a really interesting story. But first and foremost, I've got to give you props. I've got to you know give my respect and love to Tom Van Dyke. Appreciate everything <laughs> you do for us. Um, dead serious, you guys have been great to work with. Had a branch since 2008, so I really appreciate you and your whole team. So I want to make yeah. sure I thank yeah, you for that. that. That's definitely a two-way street. You know, you're, you're uh, celebrating your 10th anniversary with us. So uh, it's been a good, good working relationship. Amen. Cool. Yeah. 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 Amen. All right. Well, enough about, enough about me and my, uh, my uh, bragging on Van Dyke here. So let's get into this because I want uh, to express the story of Van Dyke here. So let's start with, um, let's let people know you know, what Van Dyke mortgage is right now, if you don't mind touching on that, you know, employees, volume, size, like where we stand today. I mean, we yeah. early 2019. Yeah, sure. We just finished up uh, 2018, uh, which was, you know, down a little bit in production from uh, uh, 17, but still we uh, did had a very good year. We uh, closed over a, a billion dollars in volume, which, which I was pretty pleased with. Uh, and, you know, we, we revenue wise, we're about 55 million a year. Uh, we've got 350 employees and we're licensed in, in uh, 40 states now. We just picked up Iowa, which is our 40th state as we, we grow to get into all 50. Uh, okay, gotcha. So with our, our size then, I mean, what would you compare Van Dyke Mortgage, right? What, what would you call Van Dyke Mortgage as far as the size of a mortgage company? Yeah, well, you know, Fannie Mae categorizes mortgage companies small, medium, and large because they have to deal and they have different conversations. The large boys being the Bank of America's, the Wells Fargo's, and you know, the uh, say ten billion dollar and up companies. Uh, so we we've moved in from the small to the medium uh, okay. with Fannie Mae. So we we're considered uh, you know a, a one to up to say seven or eight billion is considered a medium sized company. Uh, and we have all the uh, direct uh, approvals, you know, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, Ginnie Mae. Uh, and so we can deal directly with all the agencies just like the big guys. And, right. You know, we service loans. We've got uh, uh, about 185 million on our servicing portfolio right now that uh, when, when the timing is right, we retain the servicing. And we do everything just like, you know, the big banks and the big, big lenders. Uh, and we're getting relatively the same pricing. So it puts us in a pretty good posture to be not only boutique, but be natural. Gotcha. Well, that's uh, pretty funny. Small, medium, large. They definitely uh, didn't make that complicated, huh? With the name, small, medium, and large. Yeah, 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 right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, let's get into um, uh, Tom Van Dyke in the mortgage business. So, um, when did you start in the mortgage business? Oh gosh, you're going way back. Ancient oh, yeah. history. Most of the audience was, wasn't even around then, but 1976 is uh, actually when I started in the mortgage business as a, as a loan originator. And, okay. Uh, how, uh, how, did, how did you end up getting in the, uh, becoming a loan originator? Well, I actually, my first job, I went to Central Michigan University in uh, Michigan. And if you want to know where that is, if you put your hand up, it's right dead in the center of uh, the state of Michigan in Mount Pleasant. Uh, and uh, I graduated with uh, business finance and economics minor, uh, business finance major. And then I started as an abstractor, actually, at a local title company. Okay. And the, abstr the abstractor is the guy that researches the title 
and you know finds all the liens and things like that. And, well, back then that kind of has gone away now with title insurance. So, uh, and every piece of property really has title insurance on it. We don't really do abstracting anymore. But I did that for about a year, and then I got into uh, the mortgage business. Uh, and I did that for 12 years, and then we started in '87. We started Van Dyke Mortgage with three people. So, and it just grew it from there. Uh, and along the way, we had you know some real successes and had some bumps. Probably the biggest bump was the uh, you know the economic crash of 07 and 08. Uh, you know, and that, that was, uh, where the investors that we were selling loans to just virtually dried up and we were doing, uh, not a lot of subprime, but I would say 20% of our business was subprime and knock on wood. That was the best thing that ever happened that we weren't a big subprime lender. We were primarily FHA, VA, uh, Fannie and Freddie type lender, uh, because where, where the market really fell apart was in the subprime area. Yeah. yeah, so that's kind of interesting that I, I would be curious because I, I, I've been in the business since 2001. So we were a lot of subprime, um, you know, before yeah. I came on with Van Dyke. And right. how, how did you, what made the decision for you kind of skipped ahead through everything else you went through? So we'll go back for a second and revisit that. But yeah. how did you avoid going um not going subprime with the easy loans there, you know, for the loan yeah. originator. Yeah. Well, it was certainly, you know, like I said, it was about 20% of our business, uh, but we shied away from just doing a, a, a lot of the subprime business and because it was so touch and go, you know, investors would buy it, they wouldn't buy it. Uh, and then really about six to eight months before the crash, you really could feel investors really getting uh, touchy on what they would buy and wouldn't buy. Yeah. And, uh, we actually turned off subprime, knock on wood, probably about four months before um, the, the, the big crash happened. And fortunately, we only had about 15 or $20 million worth of business in our, in our book, with a total of about $100 million going at the time. Uh, and, and that whole segment just, just totally dried up literally within about a two to three week period. They're just, all the investors just evaporated. And the lenders were held like myself, uh, what do we do with these loans and, and uh, how do we work out of them? So, and it took a couple of years to do it. Uh, mm -hmm. so, uh, but, but we made it through it, which was good. Yeah, oh yeah, that's unbelievable because that's right around when I was, I had my own mortgage broker business from 04 to 08. And right. I had to make the switch to at the time, which was the, the branching opportunities um, to get FHA. And, and there was so many of them that were going out of business and that went out of business, even if I, when I went back with you guys. So credit yeah. to you for being able to make it through that. Yeah. There was a big ripple effect. A lot of lenders, like if you uh, remember RFC and WAMU and some of those old Wamu, names, yeah. they, they, uh, which were large companies, they, they provided warehousing to a lot of lenders like myself. And uh, when they pulled the warehouse lines, that just shook the tree on, on many lenders. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so a lot of people pulled out of the, you doing the warehouse business. Uh, and we were, we were in that group as well. And we had to find new warehouse lines and so forth. So uh, yeah, it was quite a turmoil back then. But let's go back real quick to the beginnings when you started. So, um, it started in 1987, and I, I don't – was Caitlin or Ryan here yet? Uh, Caitlin was. Ryan wasn't quite around yet. <laughs> All right. Shout out to them, too. Just uh, yeah. great great kids, by the way. You, you got them. Um, so a uh, new family, though, and you started a mortgage company. Yeah. Yep. It, it was three of you? Yeah, yeah. Tom Carpenter and uh, Julie Coso. They're still in the – I think they're still both in the business. I don't talk to Julie, but I just talked to Carpenter about three days ago, and uh, he's out of the business now and uh, looking to retire. Uh, but uh, yeah, he started actually in Kalamazoo, which is about an hour south of Grand Rapids with us. Okay. He, was a, he was a branch manager at that time, and I was in uh, Grand Rapids, and 
we just went out on the street and started originating loans, not doing exactly pretty much what we're, you know, we're doing now is calling on real estate agents and attorneys and financial planners in, in providing the business. At that point, we uh, total, were a total broker for the first five years, and we'd originate the loan and submit it to the investor. They would underwrite it, approve it, and then we would go ahead and close it. Um, and then in 91, we, uh, we got our Fannie Mae approval, which gave us you know, underwriting authority, and, uh, and we got our warehouse lines at that point. And from that point, then we just we, we grew from there. So we were able to underwrite and, and fund and close our own loans and have competitive price. It was the key to the Fannie Mae approval. So from like 91 to 08, did you have any other major uh, marks where you, like huge hurdle you overcame, uh, anything like that, like Black Friday or did you have any? Well, Black Friday was in 1987, if you remember, the stock market dropped 500 points. Uh, and that, the reason I remember that is we opened in July of 87. And, uh, okay. you know, when we opened, interest rates, FHAs, uh, and I'm, I'm just re uh, recalling that, we're around 15%. 15%. And, uh, right, right. Do so you hear we that, borrowers? If you're a borrower of mine, you're watching this. Just know it used to be 15%, now it's not. Yeah, yeah. So, and, and if you compare that to four and a half and five today, but uh, you know, if, if if we'd ask people, well, what do you make a year? Well, we make forty thousand dollars a year. Well, you might qualify for forty thousand, but if you have any debt, it's going to be something less. Uh, you know, because the, the the payments were just you know double and triple uh, right. with those kind of rates. Uh, hindsight twenty twenty was actually the best time to buy. When, uh, because sellers would have to drop their val their, their uh, prices so people would buy them because mm -hmm. you know, the rates were so high. But then when Black Friday came around, uh, the Federal Reserve pumped a lot of money into the system and rates came went from like 15 down to, gosh, 8% within uh, a several month period, which was all good for our industry. Gotcha. So you've come out of 08 and you know, I definitely would agree, or I'm pretty sure you would. You got, we're way stronger, Van Dyke Mortgages, from sure. that. Yeah, 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 you'll um, learn a lot. You'll learn a lot. Yeah, so like, besides uh, not jumping uh, neck deep in the uh, subprime, what else did you take away from that that meltdown? Because, you know, if, if, if anyone went through that back then, remember um, oh, impl Implodometer? Yeah. Yeah, well, they, yeah, the Imploto meter was, I forget who was doing that, but they would track every company that went out of business. And there were like three or 400 they had on pretty soon. They just stopped tracking. We were refreshing it like every hour. Yeah, I mean, people were, and, and the reason is, is that uh, all these lenders had closed loans on their warehouse lines and the investors refused to buy them. So if you can imagine, we close the loan, we've paid our commissions, uh, you know, everything's done, the borrowers got the money, and we got no place to get reimbursed. So, uh, I mean, in a, in a, if you look at us for uh, like right now, a month's production is $80 million. And uh, if, if we can't turn that, uh, you, you're just stuck with it, what do you do? And then, the, mm -hmm. then your warehouse banks just stop making you any more credit. They, they, they'll stop your lines of credit and you're out of business. And you, you had several going down every week because of it. Uh, because one investor would go out and that was just a chain reaction of another one uh, who, uh, who couldn't purchase the loans. Well, what did you learn from that time in dealing with, and this is mainly for leadership, employee stuff, but that's a stressful, that was a stressful time. And so I'm quite confident you had to have a lot of difficult conversations well, again, knock on wood, it was about 20% of our business didn't make, the, didn't make the conversations any easier. But uh, at the time, I remember we had Comerica Bank as one of our warehouse lines, and we still are with them today. Uh, and they were coming in the office every week, making sure we're getting rid of these loans and, and watching our balance sheets and our net worth uh, and our profitability, really on a weekly basis. Uh, and we just worked through it. The biggest thing back then was the values. We couldn't get appraisal values. Mm -hmm. And uh, not only were we, we couldn't sell loans, uh, investors were doing everything they could, the loans that we had just sold, to get out of them. 
and they were requesting buybacks. So, uh, you know, we were coupled not only with the buybacks uh, and how do we pay for those and keep our production moving. Uh, so I was really uh, comfortable, not comfortable, but I was really glad that 80% of our business was agency. And uh, which was FHA, VA, and Fannie Mae, uh, FHA, VA, Fannie Mae, and Freddie Mac. And uh, all of the, uh, the subprime stuff was outside of that. So uh, that's pretty much how we survived by staying mainstream. Gotcha. Yeah. So you know, we're here now. And I'm curious because you've done such a great job with this company. Maybe a few takeaways for the people that are watching this. Um, may, I'll start with employees. Um, okay. What's some of the things you've learned over the years in deal, from a leadership position? Um, well, from, a, from yeah. a leadership position, you always listen to both sides of the story. Okay. I mean, there, there are two sides to every story when there's an issue. Uh, I, and and uh, then you try to make the best decision to resolve it. Uh, I, I never try to go into a short-term relationship, never made any money with a short-term relationship. Uh, when you talk about recruiting people, uh, uh, we try to do everything we can to, to make everybody, help everybody, you know, reach their goals and uh, uh, be successful. Uh, we try to provide, uh, you know, the facilities that they need and, and we do a lot of listening uh, and uh, what's out there on the cutting edge. Because if, if you're successful, which I wish everybody was a Tim Hart uh, in, in a branch uh, such as yours, but if you're successful, we're going to be successful and the whole company is going to be successful. So, uh, you know, what we're dealing with a little bit right now is, uh, you know, we've got a handful of uh, LOs that are, you know, doing, you know, one and two loans a month. We'd like to get them to four and five loans. Uh, it's a tough business to close one loan a month. And uh, so we've got, we, we've bumped up our, our, beefed up our regional manager staff and, and we're working with every branch to, uh, Help every individual be successful. No, I hear you. Let's get into the customer then. What, uh -huh. have you, what have you learned over the years about the customer, the borrower? Well, it's interesting because technology has come around a lot. And uh, there's just no doubt that you have to take care of everybody. Because, it, and it's pretty tough. And, you know, if, if we, uh, you know, on the average, say we do 500 loans a month, you're going to have some deals that screw up. Uh, even if you had a 99%, uh, which we're very close to satisfaction rating, that, that still means you got five, you know, 1% uh, of 500, is five or six uh, families that got screwed up or something happened that uh, uh, was out, typically out of our control. I wish we could approve every single application we t have taken in, but sometimes we can't. Uh, but then they jump on the internet. The bad ones always jump on the internet. And you think, oh my, you know, they're, they're blowing up on you. Yeah. Uh, so we got to encourage all of our good deeds that we do to also, you know, go to the internet. Uh, but I'm pretty proud of our track record. Uh, like I said, we're close to 99% satisfaction. And that's when, you know, James Beebe, our corporate attorney, does surveys. Uh, and, and we track that. And we have the validation for it to say, how many people out of 100 were happy? So if we do an average month of 500 loans, uh, it's usually less than five or six people that uh, are really disturbed. And uh, we do everything we possibly can to, uh, to, to write that. Yeah, well, I mean, we talk to the borrowers all the time about how many people are involved with a real estate transaction, the human error yeah. part of it. And it's really, when you sit back and look at it, amazing uh, of how a, a deal goes from, hey, I want to buy a home to the closing because everything that's involved from the start to finish, it, there's a lot, a lot of moving parts. So uh, you, got, you got a buyer's agent, a seller's agent. You got typically, you know, two spouses. Uh, you got the title company, the mortgage company, the processor, the closer. Insurance. Survey, uh, insurance, all the inspectors. And then we're not even counting backup deals when, when we get into, you know, we do a lot of FHA, VA, first home buyers. It's not atypical to have a backup, maybe two or three deals that are backed up to this buyer that's you know, making 12 bucks an hour. 
uh, who, you know, down the, down the line is a six, seven hundred thousand dollar house that doesn't close. Doesn't close. So, oh, you mean with like the dominoes? You mean like, yeah, the, the yeah. Dominoes. Yep. The seller needs to sell their house to buy another one. That seller needs that house sold. It's like, it can yes. get pretty stressful. So yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Anytime uh, you put personality and money together, it's stress. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. No doubt. Uh, what about the, for the referral partners? I mean, my, the main, uh, my main uh, book of business comes from realtors. Um, that's the uh-huh. main, I, you know, the most people I concentrate on. And then, you know, past clients, friends, networking groups and stuff. But like referrals are my main source. So right. you know, what, what have you learned over the years about realtors? Well, you know, the real estate industry, being a real estate agent is a tough job. It really is a hard job. You get paid in chunks. Uh, they're all self-employed. They're independent contractors. And, you know, I don't really think that they would give us as much pressure as they do if they didn't have the, uh, the monkey on their back, you know, the buyers and the sellers. It's a stressful situation to buy and sell a house. Uh, it's, it's, you know, certainly one of the top three of, of you know, getting married, having a kid, buying a house are, are probably <laughs> top three stresses yeah. of life. And, and going to Costco. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so I have a lot of respect for the real estate agent. And I've always gotten along with them, uh, primarily because I like to sit and talk and ask them, do a lot of listening. How do you do your business? Uh, this is how we like to do our business. You know, we try to be transparent with you and with your borrowers. And we're not perfect. I mean, if you think you're going to come into a lender and, and find a perfect situation, uh, it's not going to happen. But I can say we're going to be in there 98, 99% of the time. We're going to be right on top of it. And if we can't do something, it's not because we didn't want to do it. And it, uh, usually uh, when we have problems, it's the ones where we just went the extra 10 yards and we probably shouldn't. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. And uh, we probably just should have said no up front. Should have said no. <laughs> you know, but we are afraid of that. You know, one out of 100, they go down the street, and they can do it. So. We try to take them to the end and we try to, you know, keep them informed and knowledgeable. And, and uh, I think in today's market, you got to keep both the buyer and the listing agents uh, right up to snuff. Yep. No, I agree. I agree. So appreciate hearing that from you. So let's get into, we had John Barnes on to talk about rates and where he thinks the rates are going to go and stuff. I yeah. would be curious with technology and everything you're seeing on your side, um, where do you see the mortgage industry heading in the next, you know, five to 10 years? Yeah. Well, we, we, you know, we always talk about the iPhone. That's certainly going to be an area. We have recently opened a uh, call center, uh, to, uh, compete in the internet market. Uh, you know, there, there's a whole market there. We also think it's going to create a lot of leads for our existing LOs, uh, because the, the internet environment is, uh, in, in the call center is, it's, it's not something where we can put deals together. You know, the, the margins are so thin. Uh, the competition is, is just a different competition. You've got to, when you get a lead, you've got to respond to it in 10 seconds or, or you're out or you're the fifth person calling. Uh, but if they have a problem and an issue, we're going to be able to funnel that to our, our local uh, LO and uh, that, who can take the time and, and handhold these deals a little better. But in the meantime, we're not going to be losing out on that same business because that it's being filled, just not, we're not getting a portion of it. So we don't look at it as a competition as in our, uh, to our current staff. Uh, we're going to primarily do it in dormant markets and markets that we don't have branches in. And then we'll be able to refer, refer a lot of business back as well. Yeah. And I already see the moves Van Dyke's been making with, um, you know, we have our secured online portal where people can upload documents right away and we know about them right away. We can review them right away. Right. Um, right. You know, you're right. seeing that the online applications, the uh, phone apps for people. And so it's, um, you know, pretty crazy stuff and, and how quick things yeah. are changing and will continue to change. Yeah, Justin Mead, head of our IT department, we've got probably five or six people just in the IT department. Uh, and that's not counting our, our, our marketing department where we got another eight, nine people. So mm-hmm. uh, you, you just have to keep up with that stuff. And uh, uh, like you said, we can take apps over the phone uh, and over the, over the web, I think is the way it's going to go. 
Yeah, no doubt. I agree. So, Tom, do you got anything else you want to add? We're going to wrap this thing up, man. You killed it. Well, hey, you know, I think this this year is uh, it, it's a year that I think interest rates are going to stable out. The economy is doing well, uh, which caused rates to come up a little bit. Uh, you know, in my mind, five, six percent in rates, which uh, they're not quite that high yet, uh, is a no brainer for, for buying and selling. Uh, I think the housing industry is still a strong industry, a major part of the uh, uh, economy. And I think this year is going to be, uh, you know, a stable year. We're going to have to work real hard for it. Uh, and uh, we're going to have to push ourselves a little bit. But I think it's going to be a win-win. I'm, uh, I, I'm, I'm cautiously uh, enthusiastic about it. And I, I think everybody will have a good year. Cool, cool. Uh, I hope you're right. So I see it down here in Southwest Florida. Our first quarter um, is going to be pretty bang up. So we're pretty excited about it. So good. Good. Tom, appreciate you being with us, buddy. And uh, for those of you out there watching, um, hope you learned us a little bit about Tom Van Dyke and Van Dyke Mortgage and just, uh, you know, what it took to get a mortgage company up and running. So hope you got a little peek behind the scenes, like the, uh, the Wizard of Oz with the curtain pulled back a little bit. Uh, Tom, again, thank you very much for joining us, buddy. Always a pleasure, man. You cool. take care today. Uh, thanks. Back. See you guys. Don't forget, like, share, and subscribe. See you. Bye-bye.